So as many of you know, uh, the Reverend Bobby Kilgore was originally planned to officiate our pet blessing, but she unexpectedly passed away over Christmas. Now, Bobby was a lover of all creatures, but most especially of rats. They were her favorite. She once shared a dream with us that she had of her father who had passed on, holding all of her rats and all her other little animals and letting, him, letting her know that they were waiting for her. She said she would be greeted when she died by a menagerie of creatures. So today, Bobby and her menagerie are going to help us bless all of our beloved companions. Uh, during this blessing, you're welcome to come up and share stories of your pets, both past and present, uh, how they've rich your life. Please be mindful of time, so we have time for everyone to share. But you can also bring up a picture or a toy or anything you want to our altar, and together we're going to honor and bless them. We're going to begin with a responsive reading. Let me go get that slide up. And the part that you're going to read is the one that's on the screen. When I indicate to you you're going to read, we give thanks for the animal companionship in our lives and on this earth. So you want to try it? We give thanks for the animal companionship in our lives and on this earth. Very good. Ours is the world alive and allowed with the presence of creatures and critters. Animals abound interwoven in our human lives and wholly interdependent. This is the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. We give thanks for the animal companions sure. in our lives and on this sure. earth. Some of us have known animals who have saved our very lives. Sometimes this is a metaphor. Sometimes it is literal fact. For so many of us, we are better human animals because we have known animal animals as part of our story. We give thanks for the animal companionship in our lives and on this earth. Animals are not only cuddly and cute, companions of solace and delight. Animals are deeply wild with the capacity to defend, to kill, even the ones who have pronounced tame. Let us always show forms of proper respect for this wild way. We give thanks for the animal companionship our lives on this earth. We bless all animals. We bless those we know and love. We bless those unknown to us who have benefited our lives. We bless even the ones that can harm us, affirming with humility their place in the interdependent web. We affirm the impulse for humans to live in right relation with all other animals on this earth. May we honor our best presence as part of the animal family. We give thanks for the animal companionship in our lives and on this earth. Very good. Okay. Hold on one moment. So traditionally, animal blessings are held on St. Francis Day, which is October 4th. St. Francis is the patron saint of animals and the environment, and he even preached to the birds and befriended wolves. Story goes, a wolf, terrifying and ferocious, who devoured men as well as animals. Francis went up to the hills, and when he found the wolf, he made the sign of the cross and commanded the wolf to come down to him and hurt no one. Then Francis led the wolf into town and, surrounded by startled citizens, made a pact between them and the wolf. Because the wolf had done evil out of hunger, the townsfolk were to feed the wolf regularly, and in return, the wolf would no longer prey upon them or their flocks. Well, we have a lot going on in October, so I wanted to do the service in the spring instead of on St. Francis Day in the fall. So why today? Well, a couple reasons. February 1st is St. Bridget's Day. St. Bridget is the goddess um, and saint for newborns, representing the first hints of spring and new life. She's associated with dairy mates, herding animals, and like St. Francis, she also befriended a wolf. Now, the king's deer were disappearing, and he was quick to blame the wolves and offered a price for their death. The king happened to have a tame wolf as a pet who one day got loose, and one of the townsfolk, seeing an opportunity, killed the wolf and brought it to the king. Well, the king was furious and planned to hang him. So Bridget took pity on him and went to the woods and befriended a white wolf, which was a very rare sight. She went up to it, and it sat and licked at her face like a puppy. And so she went to the king and offered the wolf the white wolf, in exchange for the man's life. 
And since it was a rare gift, the king accepted. Now it's also Groundhog Day, which is one of my favorites, and it's also the Candle Mass tradition. Candle Mass is the blessing of the candles on uh, the day that Jesus was presented at the temple. It's also the first of spring and the midpoint between midwinter and the equinox. Early Christians believed that if it was sunny, the shadow cast for the candles would mean 40 days of winter. They also believed that small rodents would be scared of their shadow, which made them the perfect prognosticators of prognosticators. The Germans brought this tradition to the New World and used the native groundhog, hence our celebration of Groundhog Day. In a true Groundhog Day fashion, we're going to celebrate and bless our pets over and over and over again. <laughs> so what about pets? How do pets bless our lives? Well, I found this lovely little article which says 13 ways in which dogs bless our lives, but really it applies to all animals. Dogs teach us the true meaning of carpe diem. They live in the moment and seize every possible opportunity for love. Dogs are really good for our hearts, both metaphorically and literally. Dogs will never let you feel lonely. They are perpetual companions. They make us selfless people. They prompt us to move out of our house every day for their morning and evening walks. They force us to live a healthier lifestyle. Dogs make us social people, even when we're introverts. Dogs can sniff out danger, and they're always by your side. Dogs teach us the true meaning of love. Dogs help us to move on from an incident and help us to feel better. Dogs will never betray you, or for, any, for anything at all. Dogs reduce stress, dogs give us a sense of purpose, and dogs and all animals make us happier people. So we've discussed why we love pets, but what about the blessing part? How do we do a blessing? Well, anyone can do a blessing. We do it all the time. In one of my favorite books, Blessing, the Art and the Practice, David Spangler notes, a blessing can be anything, a kind word, a prayer, a ritual, a gesture, an embrace, or a gift. At its heart, giving a blessing is really quite simple. We innately know how to do it, precisely because it comes from the heart, from a sense of caring and helpfulness. Every time you create safety and reassurance before there was fear, you're giving a blessing. Every time you perform an act of kindness, providing money where there is poverty, shelter where there is vulnerability, food where there was hunger, love where there was loneliness, comfort and encouragement where there was despair and depression. You are being a blessing. There is no special technique other than having an open and generous heart and a loving and aware mind. And in that spirit, I invite you all to come up and share your pet. Those who are with us and those who wait, wait for us in the great beyond. Tell us about your pet, and then we will share a blessing together. If you have a toy or a picture of a treat or something you want to bring up here, you're welcome to as well. I'm going to put up our blessing so you can see it real fast, and then I'll take it down so we can all share in the joy of our pets. So real quick. Now, this is a blessing that um, one of our largest churches, the UU All Souls in Tulsa uses. They use it for their kid blessings, but pets are really like our kids. So I figure this works for pets, too. So I'm going to have everyone come up. Tell us about your pet. If you want to share anything, you're welcome to. And together, I will say this part. And at the end, we can all say together, be blessed and be a blessing. It says, may your eyes see beauty. May your lips speak truth. May your heart know love. And may your hands do the good works of this world all the days of your life. Be blessed and be a blessing. Right. And I want to show this if, since you like ferrets. This is kind of funny. Ferrets are very small. They're about this size. And my ferret loves this toy. And I'll show you what happens. So he runs around the house with this thing in his mouth, flapping, trying to hide it. <laughs> so just a little fun thing. But <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I got it on Amazon. <laughs> Okay, well, it's a little sensitive. <laughs> oh, and that, 
I had to go looking for that because they stash things all over my house. I had to go find that one. <laughs> Do we have any other questions or comments? I know we're getting near the hour, so I won't keep you all too long. I don't see anyone. I thank you all for sharing your babies and sharing your blessings because pets are such a blessing. Uh, and in closing, I'll say we give thanks for the animals who live close to nature, who remind us of the sanctities of birth and death, who do not trouble their lives with foreboding or grief, who let go of each moment as it passes and accept each new one as it comes with serenity and grace. Enable us to walk in beauty as they do, at one with the turning seasons, welcoming the sunrise and at peace with the sunset. As we hallow the memory of good friends now departed with love, who loved abundantly and in their time were loved, who freely gave us their affection and their loyalty. Let us not be anxious for tomorrow, but ask only that kindness and gratitude fill our hearts day by day in the passing years. We give thanks for the animals.